Look how clean that looks. Looks a lot better. Cleaner than brand new. Cleaner than it was. <laughs> I tried soaping out the inside of the tank as good as I could get it. You can still see that little grimy kind of color in there, but I can't get in there with a brush. So I sprayed it with the good acidy soap. That's as good as we're gonna get it. Before we're done cleaning the sprayer, I like to just clean everything at once if we can. Look at this cap. This is dirty. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Right now in the comments, right below how many water bottles we're gonna find in here. I'm guessing seven. They're stealthy too, because you don't see any right now, but if you take a closer look, look at that. There's one. I'm underneath the semi. I'm gonna check the transmission fluid. Gotta grease a couple things under here. You probably hear a semi running. Cooper's beside me trying to fit some air leaks in the Volvo. Any luck, Coop? My nose itches. Well, we gotta check that one line on this thing too, don't we? Or... How you doing, Maverick? Huh? How you doing, bud? What are you doing? Cooper is underneath the semi tractor now, tightening the brakes on it, checking them out. Are they turning, Coop? Oh, it just didn't seem like they were real tight. We probably tightened them last. Oh, yeah, people turn, eh? Well, check the power steering oil, and I think we're getting this one about ready, Coop. Oh, oh no! Uh, is that a grease from it? Was it, was it a grease in the jack on the trailer? Two. Tris! Oh, there's got to be another one down here. Oh, look at that. Big old four. Stay. Oh, five, six, seven. Oh, we found a bonus bottle. This is eight. That's not a water bottle, so seven water bottles. Man, how many things of paper towels we got in here? Three. That's why we don't have any in the shop. More paper towels. Ooh, these are the good ones. How long have those been in there for? Normally when I'm running, I have a big toolbox here. Got every hand tool you'd need, any joint, O-ring, whatever for the sprayer. All goes in there. Ideally, I'd like to keep this area clean, but you usually end up putting your used gloves there, or if you have a broken tool, or if you have dirty tools or something, they kind of end up over here. So I'm just trying to figure out a little better way we can organize the cab. Honestly, not having the toolbox over here would be nice. Then you could actually stretch out your leg. Otherwise, you kind of got your foot up on it, which, I mean, that's comfortable too. But it would be nice to be able to stretch your legs every now and again. The rule of thumb I like to go by is it's really easy to keep a clean area clean. And by that, if there's nothing there, if you see something there, you know, oh, hey, that's not supposed to be there. You get it out right away. Versus a cluttered area where everything's everywhere, you think, oh, what's well, one more thing? What's one more thing? What's one more thing? And then before you know it, you barely have an area to put your feet. I'm just trying to think how we can kind of revamp a little bit. Part of my revamp strategy is, hey, could we get a toolbox that would fit down in here? This is underneath the seat. Honestly, we don't really use this for anything. We got our two rolls, three rolls of toilet paper. Now, just in case you need those. That's actually handy. We're gonna keep those in here. Three things of glass cleaner. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a fourth one. Oh, that's a Mountain Dew down there. I think we could utilize this compartment space better, maybe for like a vertical toolbox. This is all that we found underneath that seat. Four more water bottles, so 11 plus a Mountain Dew. So if he gets 11, congratulations, you're right. Rick, how you doing, buddy? Hi. Hi. Ooh, that might work. Oh my, look at that. Can't even tell it's there. Whoa, are you here to deliver me a new sprayer? I am. Bringing more gifts. <laughs> if that's a new sprayer, Cole, that must be one of them little drones with a little two gallon tank on it. Get that in there. Right at 100. I'm gonna put a little bit more in it. 95. <laughs> what Cooper's doing, he's putting grease on that fifth wheel plate. So when the trailer slides onto it and hooks onto it, it makes it slippery for turning and everything. 
Actually, if them plates get too dry, you can feel it when you're turning. It wants to pull the truck. So he's actually he's got this trailer jacked up a little bit so he can get the gun underneath it. Just kind of show you what he's doing here. Moment of truth. What's the best way to put it in like this? Oh, it's that fuel filter. Come on. There we go. That was our problem. Look at that. Easy fix. You just look at it. Look at it. <laughs> oh boy. We got leg room. We got clean floor. We got tools tucked away in there. This is my pH tester. I do need to bring this home, get this cleaned up. Probably, mm, I don't know if I should store that in here or not. It's gonna be in the heated shop. I guess it's not gonna hurt anything. We'll just keep it in here. There we are. We got a clean sprayer. It's always one of those things when you super clean something like this, it seems like it's not really doing a whole lot, but it just empties a lot of clutter within the cab. I'm actually trying to do this process with all of our cabs and all of our vehicles and everything. We just have the stuff that you actually use and the stuff that you think you'd use, but you don't just leave that for the shop because that's where you actually use it. I think we got this rig ready without looking at it again, except we're waiting for a little switch on the heater. I can't think of what you want to call it, but to turn it on and off the hot to the heater core. One down, two to go. Oh, he does got to put an antenna on it so I can have the radio for music when I'm driving. When I'm not talking to you guys, I can turn on the music. Then we got a 1988 wolf. This trailer here, I think we pretty well got it ready. Oh, we got to do some work on these gearboxes. This gearbox here last year, right at the end of the season, was really starting to wobble around, about ready to fall off. Then on the tractor, Cooper took the rims, tires off, took the rims to somebody he knows. They're going to sandblast and paint them for us. So we got to, uh, hopefully this week, they'll be done. We can get them back on. And then I think that truck's pretty well ready to roll out of here, too. Nice. Well, almost got hot there and it shot grease all over me. We're going to take this plate off because it's getting pretty busted. Cooper's working on a new one right now. Long bend or something. We'll go over and check on Cooper. He is trying to make a new pipe to go over the shaft that I just cut. We got caught up in the office a little bit. So now the sun's starting to go down. We still need to get the wide drops and the sprayer washed. Not gonna do that tonight. We have a higher priority job. Stuff is starting to get brown around there. And we have some big old tree piles that need to be, well, they need to be shrunk down. Because once we get the soybeans off the Hanson farm, Ron's gonna come in with his bulldozer and he's gonna do some work in there for us. And while he's in there, I would like to him to get rid of all the excess tree piles we have on the side. So we need to get some uh, of that red liquid stuff that smells kind of like diesel fuel. <laughs> this is just weed killer. We're just killing weeds. Definitely not gasoline. Nope. This is weed killer. Oh, sorry, little guy. Just taking you out. Your fault for growing in the middle of the driveway. It's good old weed killer. That's organic. Weed killer, straight 
from old dinosaur bones. <laughs> We're gonna be putting some miles on this bad boy tonight. Those trees have been there, well, since we had the excavator. When dad broke the window on the excavators and we stacked those trees. So they should be really dry. <laughs> I'm about to put a road closed sign up on this road, keep people from driving down it. I'll dig a big hole right in the middle of it so they can't get through. <laughs> oh, baby, how many critters do you think are in there? Oh, none. They know we were coming. I sent the eviction notice last month. right where you walk. Oh yeah. <laughs> I feel like Tarzan tearing down these vines. Oh, that's a thorn one. <laughs> Don't want to mess with those. No. I was like, why is this thing sticking to me? <laughs> oh yeah. Look at this one nice and hot. Doing what we gotta do, get these trees stacked. Feeling like a professional oh. logger. Of trees up here. Yeah. Is this what pile number is this? I don't know. One of many. So now you're gonna light this one? Yep. Get it lit. Light it over there and then I'll probably try to push everything this way. pick up like three acres from this. This tree line stuck out in the field probably 50, 60 feet for three quarters of a mile. I love how Cole literally sits there and admires it every single time he starts it. I'm just admiring the, my fires. See, I told you. <laughs> I knew that's what he was doing. <laughs> Cole looks a little creepy. Got a little bit of a soybean update at dad's place. These are our most matured soybeans. Just look at all the weeds out there with them too but they're turning fast. Then over here is where we started planting soybeans. This is our very first pass right here along the edge of this waterway. Those are almost fully de-leafed. They're talking 85 degrees for the next week. I'm guessing one week from today, we will be harvesting these soybeans. Helps if you unlock the door. Van Wall just left a few minutes ago. They dropped off the 6155M and the S350. This was the setup that was at the Farm Progress Show. If you went to that, you would have saw this exact tractor. Cooper had a couple neighbors and a relative call. They need some custom mowing done for him. So he's got a few more jobs to do with that setup yet. He's gonna be using the baler a little bit more too. Now here in a bit, we're gonna head out with the skid loader. We can see on the horizon, we got some smoke signals coming up. That's where we lit those fires. We got like 10 more big piles that we need to get burned over there. We also need to push them on top of each other, the ones that we already burned, so we can get them condensed down more. But before we do that, we got the sprayer all cleaned up the other day. This is ready to be winterized. It's ready to be inspected. But these Y drops that were on it, these have yet to be cleaned. These have yet to be winterized. And they are gross. We have 23 of them plus the bracket tree that they go on. Everything gets stored in this cold storage building. So we need to sure, sure, we need to make sure we get these all cleaned up nice. We don't want them getting all crust, crusted. Oh boy. Words today. Rusted and corroded and looking gross. We want them nice and clean and most importantly we want to make sure that they're all cleaned out especially down in here because if there's any liquid in here and this freezes it could crack stuff, break things and that is the last thing that we want. So we're gonna get these power washed down, cleaned them, brushed them, and then I think we can take an air hose and just shove it right in the end of these. And hopefully if there's stuff in there, just blow it right out.
to just over an hour point, we have 12 done. So technically we are half of one wide drop over half. I'm happy with how these are cleaning up. The hardest part is the center bit. You can only get in there so good with the brush and then you just get as good as you can with the power washer, get squirted with water, I'm all wet. My whole right side of my body is nice and wet. But then the bottom, same thing. I'm hoping we can just do these brackets out here in the grass. These are kind of heavy to move by yourself. These should actually go pretty quick because they're big. You don't have to flip them over or you just have to flip them once and they have not as many cracks and crevices as the Y drops do. I don't know why I just now thought of this. We can do two at a time. Cooper and I, we are over here at the main farm. We're gonna get the uh, Ace 93, whatever it is, 9230 combine out. Get the bean head on it. Bean head was pretty well gone through last winter, but we gotta put a new sickle on it. Why is it when you want one item out, it's gotta be the thing clear in the back and we got a bunch of stuff to move out of the way to get to it. This is our grave digging machine, mainly for the winter time when the ground's frozen. We got Maverick out here with it. Maverick, Maverick. Look at that air bar. That is one thing I'd like to be able to get some comparisons of the air bar versus the head without the air bar. I was pretty impressed the way that air just whoo, blows that beans right in there. Now this is where the driver needs to know I'm out of the way, he's gonna start this stuff up. We do not wanna get our fingers down in any of that stuff. Last year during harvest, Cooper was questioning if these belts here go fast enough to bring the beans into the middle. I've never seen one run before, so honestly, I didn't know. He had some different guys come down and look at it. They thought it was fine, but then he found somebody that specializes in this head. They thought it was running too slow, so he's working with that guy now, trying to get things figured out. Oh, thank you for posing, Rick. Whoa, that was a big jump. That was a big jump. I didn't think it'd take three hours, but it did, but we got him done. Rick, what are you doing? What are you doing, huh? <laughs> oh, you just wanted to bite me. I understand. Hey. My opportunity just hit. I get to move the combine. Wow. Got to remember how to run this. Going to try to move the combine in a shady spot, but boy, I don't know. Maybe where we got it's about the best as we're going to do. I don't know. I was hoping I could pull over here and get a little more shade, but that may not happen. We may have to set up a tent. About 84 degrees today. It's a little hot, humid, sticky. Really ain't too bad of a day though. It was a neighbor. Well, technically, I'm not on the neighbor's field, but technically, I'm over his property. Can you get busted for trespassing over somebody's property? Like when you're in a parachute, you're not on their or hot air balloon, you're not on their property. So I wonder if we could build a house that floats with hot air balloons, put it over the neighbor's property, and then when they walk underneath us, we'd say, hey, you're trespassing on our space.
I don't know if you can really see it, but no, you can't because the sickle's gone. But we're putting a new sickle in. These knives, the old ones were getting really, really dull. These are the old sickles that ran last year. They're just getting real chewed up in here and dull. Last year, beans were hard on everything. Everything was green stems, picked hard. I'm gonna slide this in so I don't get your fingers in there. Get this thing greased up quick so we don't forget. Oh, are you kidding me? I heard it going in. Yep, it's coming out. Just wanted to make sure I had the cavity cleaned out here with no grease in it to get the pen back together. I just want to make sure grease is full in there, so. Going to have to back the combine in the machine shed tonight. We have a tire on our trailer for the bean head. It's flat and we weren't able to get that repaired today. So we are going to attempt to put the, just back the combine in. So if it gets dewy tonight, a nice clean wax job does not get dirty. Everything's all said and done, all washed up, cleaned up. We're ready to throw some air through the end of these. We'll just take an air hose and put it right on that little hole and then it'll blow the center out and then we'll grab the other hose that's on it and then it'll blow the two out on the bottom. I think I'm gonna add this job to my list of least favorite things to do on the farm. This is an all day activity. It took like three hours for these and two for the big ones and then all the little bracketry stuff. It just, you get really wet during it. That's, that's the annoying part about it. It's not the power washing itself. It's just, it squirts back on you a lot. Dad went and picked some ears over at Kristen and Rusty's. Check these things out. These things are monsters. Haven't seen ears this big in a long time. 2017 was a record corn year for us. Well, all time record. I don't even know if they were this big back then. I went and pulled these from Tabletop the other day. These have been sitting in the shop for a little while. They're not quite fully mature yet. They still have maybe half milk line or so, maybe just a little bit beyond that, but they have a ways to go, so they're still really high moisture. They're definitely over 32% moisture yet, probably 35, 36. So these ones have been sitting in here, so we can kind of move them. And they've shrunk because they've dried, so they've gotten a little smaller. And these were just picked today. If we leave these in here for a little while, they'll end up turning in like this too. Quick and dirty calculation with this. If the whole field was this size and we had 80,000 kernels per bushel, so 56 pounds of corn would have 80,000 kernels in it. This particular ear here is 18 around and 39 long. At a population of 34,000, this would be a 298 bushel per acre ear. Our goal is 300. So hopefully this came in at like 65,000 kernels per bushel. Then this is like a 350 bushel per acre year. That'd be pretty cool. Cole's outside talking to you guys. Wait till the night out. But I'm ready to call it the night. It's dark out. It's starting to get damp. I'll let him do the finished talk for the night. Talk to you guys later.